Hi everyone, and welcome back to some more Humankind, where we will continue the tutorial game. And if you missed the first episode, it will be linked in the video description below and in the cards in the top right corner. I explained a lot of basic game mechanics in there, so if you're confused about any basics, you should definitely check it out. So, we do have a neighbor here, and unfortunately, uh, there's a pretty common glitch where the avatars get swapped. So this is obviously not Quill, this is Shen. And this is obviously not Shen, this is Mordred. And this is not uh, not Mordred, this is Spiff. <laughs> it's a weird glitch, it's kind of harmless, but it's just bizarre. Anyway, so there are a few more things to talk about. And uh, one of the things you should strongly consider when you are starting a new game and you're looking at what terrain to grab, where to expand, are luxury resources. And the luxury resources are very important from around the mid-game onward, as in even more important than in the early game, because of Wondrous effects. And the Wondrous effects are basically a monopoly bonus. You have to own at least half. So in case of Silk, I would need to own at least three Silk out of six. And I will also need the patronage technology later on, which is why this only becomes relevant around mid-game. But these bonuses are extremely powerful. So for example, I already have two silk inside my territory. If I grab all three to the west over here, I will have five. And once I get the Wondrous effect from them, I will have plus 25% industry in all my cities. And also stability, but that's less important here plus 25% production in every single city I have, globally. And uh, for example, we also have silver to the south, which is a science bonus. So if I grab free silver over here, I will get plus 15% science everywhere. So these are very powerful bonuses. And obviously they can synergize with various cultures. So if I get a chance to pick up a production-based culture, that would go quite well with the Silic bonus. It's something important to consider. Anyway, next up we are going to grab some more land, and since our unique unit will require copper, we will grab copper to the south. There's also a good chance a Quill Shen will declare war on us. He already has 80 war support, and he also gets more industry on Maker's Quarter. So, he will generally have a little bit more production than an average AI. So, he could use that to get an army out faster. Some of the bonuses AIs get are quite powerful, and you should definitely pay attention to them. The strength over here. So, for example, right here, we got extra land movement speed. And the plus 20% industry in all cities. These are pretty powerful bonuses. Here we have plus 10 industry on each maker's quarter, which is actually quite a lot in the early game, and plus 15% gold in all cities. Plus 10 industry on each maker's quarter is very strong early on. So it's something to watch out for. Anyway, next up we will research bronze working, because that will unlock our unique unit, and it will allow us to actually exploit copper. Obviously first we have to grab it, but we will. We might also get some neutrals popping up, but we'll talk about them once they appear. Now, I don't want to go too far, but at the same time, I want to make contact with two more AIs. However, right now it's more important to grab as much land as possible close to our territory. So I will not be going too far with that scout. I will go back now. We could actually ransack that sanctuary over here. It will be worth a little bit of gold. We are getting plus 15 influence Rapid per turn, so that's decent. Get and you can see that the Egyptians have a special interest in this place. Sometimes AI will do that to indicate they have an interest in some land you own, for example. Like this one. Okay, so here's another AI. I would not put myself in this position if I feared the consequences. So he will have 80 war support because 
he gets 15 default and then 30 from affinity. He's a militarist affinity, which means he will have an easier time declaring war on other people. And by other people, I mean us, most likely, in this case. It's going to happen, but we'll be ready, hopefully. Now, let's claim this copper down here before some neutrals show up and claim it for us. And even if they don't show up, it's not the end of the world. However, we don't want to have copper ASAP. Now, this is not going to be an amazing outpost, because the terrain is not exactly great. So I'm just going to start one here. More production means the outpost will be completed faster. And then we can attach it to Babylon, because we want to attach it to Babylon anyway. You know, to get the copper. Now, you don't have to attach the outpost to get the resources. If it's not attached, you can pay influence. I can't show you here, because there's no resource here. But if there was a resource in this territory, there would be an option to hook it up with influence. Which is sometimes worth it. It depends. It's generally way cheaper to hook up a luxury or a strategic resource using influence for an outpost than to attach that outpost to some city. It can be way cheaper in like mid game and late game, and sometimes you need that resource. So here we got science osmosis, which will happen from time to time if you have somebody nearby uh, who has more research than you or more technologies than you. And now I have the option of either paying 72 gold to unlock domestication or I can get. 57 science for my current research. So, since we are not actually in that much of a rush to finish bronze working, since I have to finish this outpost, then I have to hook up copper, and I cannot speed up this outpost. This will take three turns no matter what. We need 35 production, and currently we're getting, uh, well, like 7, 11. Well, either way, we need three more turns to get 35 total. So we can actually pay to unlock domestication. 72 gold is not that much for us, so we will pay, and that gives us domestication. Okay, so next up we want to secure some of the luxuries. I definitely want silk, because that bonus will be very powerful later in the game. It will be quite powerful early on too because that's plus two industry per silk on each maker's quarter. That is pretty nice early in the game. But it's about that percentage bonus, it's extremely strong. Here we got some more science and influence. So that's 58 right now. And we do want to build astronomy house, but since we're nowhere close to entering classical era yet, we don't have to rush it that much. First, we'll hook up that silk to get the industry bonus. And then I will likely work on my industry a little bit more. Because more industry means you get to build everything faster, including an army. So we will need that and we'll also need some food. Because in humankind, every single unit in the game takes population. And you can use units to move population around. Because when you disband a unit, inside your territory, you get that population back. It gets added to the city you disbanded it near. But I already mentioned that in the previous episode. And some units later in the game will require two, or even three, and some even require four population. Some of the very late game units actually require four population. So that's quite a bit. Sometimes population can be a bigger bottleneck for military recruitment than production. It's definitely something to keep in mind. Now, we don't know there's an unknown strategic resource right here, and also silk. So I will definitely grab this territory, even though this is not going to be the most impressive outpost of all times. It's going to be okay near that river, but I'm mostly claiming this for the resources specifically. So let's go there and grab that. However, we will have to pay some influence to hook up uh, that copper outpost, and we certainly will. So here's religion. So when you create your religion, you have two options. You can either get faith 
based on number of territories you own or based on population. And this is generally pretty simple. It basically comes down to more faith giving you more followers. That's pretty much what it is. You don't really need to look deeper than that when you're starting out. It's not really that much deeper than that. More faith means you will get more followers, your religion will spread more. It's actually pretty simple like that. And when you get more followers, you will get to pick tenets for your religion, which are various bonuses. Some of them can be quite powerful. So I think we'll actually go for number of territories here. There we go. So now we can see we have 0 out of 25 followers. Once we get 25, we'll get to pick uh, our first tenet. There are four tiers total. We'll go into them once we actually get there. But some of them are quite nice. Like for example, plus to industry on forest and plus to industry on woodland. And this actually works when you're exploiting that terrain with districts other than a maker's quarter. So it's actually a really powerful bonus. If we can grab that, we probably will. So here we got some more science from a minor technological breakthrough. And there's bronze working. Now we need one more turn to finish the outpost, then we can hook up the copper. So let's check our research. We could get irrigation to unlock the public fountain, which is a pretty important early game stability improvement. We could also get organized warfare, which is perhaps one of the most important military technologies in the early game, because it allows you to use reinforcements. Which means you can use more than a single stack in combat. Basically, the other stack will get to join the fight by deploying uh, wherever they were before it started. You'll see how it works once we get there, but basically you need organized warfare to be able to use more than a single stack of units in combat. Without this tech, you cannot do that even if they are standing literally next to each other when they get attacked. You need organized warfare. So, since we don't anticipate a war sooner or later, we will get it, organized warfare. I will teach you so, our neighbor is condescending right now, because we are less powerful than them. We also renounced our grievances against them, and that their war support is higher than ours. We also follow different religions, but I fully expect a war with him is probably going to happen, which is why we're working on that copper now. And then we'll get a few units. Once we get those, we can even the odds a little bit. And we'll also get some fortifications. But let's not get ahead of ourselves just yet. And we'll talk in general about how war works once we get there. It's a pretty important part of the game. Alright, so here's another narrative event where the only real effect here is where it will move you on your ideology axis. I don't want to move towards progress here, because we will get some science. Unfortunately, from this level, you cannot actually see the exact bonus the ideology shift will give you. It would be nice if you could see that from the narrative event level, but if you want to see it, you actually have to go into civics, which I can't even do right now. So there's technically no possible way to see the bonus this ideology axis will give you, if you are just starting out the game. Because I cannot open the civic screen, I cannot see the bonuses from this level, you actually cannot see them at all here. But I can tell you that progress, which is right here, uh, gives you signs. So that's what I want, that's what we'll pick up. So there we go. Alright, now, uh, let's send the scout somewhere south, because I don't necessarily want to start outposts close to him. They will be quite vulnerable, and it would be tougher to defend them. And while this would make for a pretty decent one right here, in terms of yields, it doesn't have any resources. And right now, I would rather secure resources. In fact, I would be leaning more towards grabbing this one, because there's an unknown strategic resource. But as a priority, we actually need to hook up either this territory or this one. Because Atakoraka is currently disconnected from the rest of our territory. 
and we don't want that to be the case. This is also some pretty weird terrain. There are cliffs over here, which means I cannot go this way. But it also means my neighbor cannot attack me through here, because there's a cliff. He has to attack me through this choke point right here. So if I build a few fortifications in this area, I should be fairly safe. But as you can see, I actually have to go all the way around, because there's a cliff here, just straight up. I have to go all the way around. So I guess we will go east after all, because I don't have much of a choice with this particular scout. And now, the game will suggest various locations for outposts, which is based purely on yields. They aren't always the best one you want to go for, but it gives you a general idea at a glance where good yields might be. However, right now we want to grab this territory right here, not this one. We will get this one as well, because it has two silk, but I want to secure the strategic resource. Strategic resources are very important in the game, and they can be quite rare. Anytime you get a chance to grab a territory with a strategic resource, you should do that. Because even if you think you have a lot of territories, even if you think you have a lot of unknown strategic resources, you might end up with like, let's say, one saltpeter, one oil, or even zero oil. So, yeah, it's pretty important. And sure, you can technically buy it from other people, but not always. And they might not always like you. You might end up fighting them, you just don't know. It's safer to have the resources yourself. Okay, so we finished hooking up the luxury here, now we can see that we have two silk, which means every maker's quarter we build will get plus four industry. So that is quite nice. We can build one here and we'll get plus 13. We'll also lose one food because we are currently exploiting one food there. And once I build the maker's quarter on this tile, I will no longer be exploiting that food. But one food for 13 production is a pretty good trade as far as I'm concerned. So we will grab that. This will also give us another worker slot for industry, which we do want. And uh, we should be able to hook up the copper now. So this will cost me 80 influence. The next outpost will cost me 50. So we need 130 total to get all of that. Uh, I will attach the outpost first. So let's do that. Now we have an administrative center, which increases our slots here, so now we have 4 industry slots, 5 food, 4 gold and 4 science. We will obviously finish the maker's quarter, we cannot finish it in 2 turns, so there's not much point assigning one more guy, however there is surplus production, so if you have a lot of excess production it's not wasted, it will roll over and it will be used for the next thing in line. Not only that, you can build multiple things in a single turn in this game. It's not capped to like one improvement per turn or one unit per turn, you can get multiple. If you have enough production to build, let's say, four districts in a single turn, you can do that. If you have enough production to recruit ten units in one turn, you can also do that, provided you have enough population. So just something to keep in mind, excess production is basically never wasted. But again, if you want to min max our short term production, and my goal is just to finish the maker's quarter in three turns, I can assign this guy to something else, like to food, and then we will get plus and pop in four turns instead of five. So we will do that, and as you remember, we will need the population for our military. Okay, so now we need 50 influence. Which means I'm just going to chill around here and wait to claim the silk. Because then we will have a total of 5 silk, and that's going to be a very nice bonus. Both in the late game and right now, I mean 5 silk is going to be plus 10 industry for every single maker squatter. That is quite powerful. However, we probably want to have an outpost in this area, a little bit closer to our territory. Because once we go to war, it might be a little bit harder to defend it in this location. Because the enemy can ransack it. 
so you don't actually have to actively defend it sometimes, even if it's attached to your city. Now, there was a curiosity right here, but since there's a cliff, I would have to go all the way around and through here. So we will not be doing that right now, because my priority right now is to claim this territory. And I have to say, one of my favorite parts of humankind is just how important terrain is. And obviously, in civilization, terrain is important too. But in humankind, it's so much m more important. It's just extremely important. Also, strategically, for combat purposes, it's much easier to defend choke points, it's much easier to defend high ground, but also for like your city development. But in combat, it's extremely important. And combat, for me, is one of the best parts of the game. I really enjoy it, it's really well done. So combined with how important terrain is, I'm like not anywhere near bored with this game, even though I have 150 hours in it already. It just makes every setup, every map, quite a bit different to play. At least that's just me. So uh, let's check out this area here. We got horses, but that's a bit far away. And two strategic resources in this desert over here. All right then. Right, so we need 50 influence. I'm just going to wait here and wait to get 50. Because I really want that silk badly. It's going to be really, really good. Especially if we get a chance to pick up one of the production-based cultures later on. Which we should be able to. Speaking of cultures, however, of so Harampans are one star away from entering Classical Era. I definitely want to be first to Classical Era, that much is obvious. Now, I could pay to finish this Maker's Quarter quickly. I don't think I'm going to do that. My income is not that amazing right now. I'd rather finish it the regular way. Uh, I will grab that curiosity over there, that should be worth some influence and science. Uh, this guy can just sleep for two more turns. There's the Maker's Quarter. We also got a Science Boost. So now we have Organized Warfare and we got a Scientist Star. Now we should probably pick up Irrigation because we will need that stability sooner or later. And we can check what we need for more stars. We need four more technologies for the Scientist Star. We need to attach five more territories for expansion each star. We need 400 more influence. We need two more districts, a quite a lot more population, quite a lot more gold, and we need to kill six military units. So it won't be fast, but we'll get there. Now, if I want this curiosity, again, I actually have to go all the way around because this is a cliff. I'm not willing to do that, actually. I'd rather go and claim some more land quickly. Because even though no AI will settle any of this, at least not in the near future, you might get neutrals popping up and starting a neutral city. And you can assimilate or conquer neutrals, but it obviously takes some time. It's way better if you can just get an outpost there yourself. So next up we should actually hook up that copper, so we will obviously do that. And then I definitely want to hook up the silver, because that will give us some extra science. Although, we can't actually build research quarters yet, so we can wait with the silver. We will get some yields from exploitation, that's plus two gold, but this can actually wait a little bit longer. We would get a little bit of stability, but that's not as important at the moment. What is important at the moment is building some fortifications. So, since our neighbor will almost certainly attack us from this direction, and this is where we got our border with him, we should build a garrison. So, garrisons serve more than one purpose. It's a defensive point, so it gives you actual fortification in combat. You also get to spawn units there. You can pick where you want to spawn your newly recruited units. You can do it in a garrison, some other unique districts that replace a garrison, and you can do it in your city center. So, garrisons serve as fortification, as unit spawn point, and they also give you stability. Right now it's only plus five, but you can get extra bonuses 
for stability from garrisons, and you can get it up to plus 15, for example. So it's a good way to get some quick stability as well. So right now we probably want one like over here to be as close to his city as possible. Then we will be able to spawn units right here. And then we probably want one like over here to guard this choke point because this is a little bit of high ground. In fact, it might be better to just get one right here first because then we can have a unit right here and a bunch of ranged units behind it. So that would be way better for defense if he ends up attacking us. So we'll do it here, because if I build it here, I will lose two production, which I don't want. So this is a good spot, this is a very good spot. This right here is a cliff, so he can't walk up the cliff. He specifically has to walk up here. There's no other way. There is a unit much later in the game uh, that can like scale cliffs, but it's only one unit and it's in industrial era. We are obviously nowhere close to industrial era. Now, if we actually want to work our religion, we will need to build an obelisk. And you kind of need to hurry up with that early on. But I won't be building it yet because, well, I'm a little bit busy. But you don't want to build an obelisk early on to actually, you know, have a religion, get more followers, get tenets. You need faith and obelisk gives you 20 faith. It also gives you 20 stability in the region is built in. So that 20 stability can be nice too. Uh, here we got irrigation now because that's plus 10 science from the curiosity. So next up we could get the wheel because that will give us roads between our outposts or I could go directly for standing army to unlock swordsmen. We can do that and hopefully we'll be able to get iron somewhere. I'm sure it's out there somewhere. I'm actually kind of surprised he didn't declare war yet. I suppose there's no crisis at the moment, he just has 80 war support because he's a militarist, but he doesn't hate us. He doesn't even have grievances anymore. So there's a good chance we won't have to go to war early on, because I would rather focus on our expansion right now. And here, speaking of neutrals, here's a neutral stack. And here they started a neutral city. So this icon right here means that they are currently hostile, which means they will actively attack us unless we improve our relations with them. And the way this works is that you have a bars down here, a different color for different players, and you can pay either influence or gold to increase your relation gain per turn. And once you get to 100, you will be able to pay influence to assimilate them which basically gives you control of the city and all the units they own. And once you get to a certain level of relations, like for example Tolerant, you get the ability to hire their armies as mercenaries and they will also not attack you anymore. At Cordial you can buy their resources and you will share vision. And at Friendly you can assimilate them. So that's basically how it works. When I pay 40 gold here, I will now be getting plus two per turn. If I pay 113 more, I will be getting plus four per turn. So that's basically how it works. We want to get at least to tolerant so that they won't attack me. Anyway, now we will start an outpost right here. So this is an, an okay spot. Over this way. Slightly more yields on that one. And this is still a good choke point. So plus 14 food, plus 12 production. That's good, let's get that one. Now this guy, I don't know what resource this is, but it's a strategic resource, so it's going to be useful no matter what. And here we got our first civic that we can pick up. So civics have two different effects. First, you get the effect from the actual civic itself, which is this thing right here. And then you also get the ideology shift from that civic. So there are four different uh, ideology axes. We have collectivism and individualism up top. You can either go left or right. You can get one or the other, you can get both. 
In the middle, you generally get plus 10 stability in all your cities. So when you move away from the middle, you lose that stability, which is not really a big deal, but it's something to be aware of if you actually happen to need that. And then when you move towards extreme left or right, you get another bonus. So in this case, if I go left, I get plus 10% industry on cities and outposts and plus 5% like in the mid left. On the right, I get gold. So plus 5% and then plus 10% gold. Then we got homeland and world. So I usually go for homeland because that gives you more combat strength. And any flat combat strength modifier you can get in this game is extremely important because the outcome of any fight between any units is kind of based on the actual absolute difference in your combat strength. So if you have a 15 combat strength advantage, for example, that 15 combat strength advantage is just as good when you're fighting, let's say, a 70 strength unit with an 85 strength unit. Well, you will rarely get 85, but you get the idea, versus a 10 strength unit with a 25 strength. What matters is not the percentage, but the actual amount of excess combat strength you have. So this is a really nice bonus, and that's usually what I go for. Then we got Liberty, where you get influence on emblematic districts. Emblematic districts are basically unique districts of the cultures you picked up. And on the right, we got Authority, which gives you more vision and detection range. And as you probably guessed, I generally favor influence, especially after a recent patch, which made a lot of influence costs a lot higher. So influence is extremely important, even more so than it was in some of the earlier versions. And then we have tradition, which gives you faith and progress, which gives you science. So as you might have guessed, I favor science. But again, sometimes you get a tough choice because you might have a really useful civic effect. And there are a few like that, which I can't show you at the moment, but there are a few. So sometimes you might really want to get that civic effect, but it will push you towards an ideology that you don't necessarily want. Also, this affects your relations with the AI. If you have an ideology that kind of aligns with your neighbor, he will be more likely to like you if you care about that kind of thing. But right now we will pick up influence here. So that will cost us 20 and we will get plus 5 influence on main plaza, which is basically in each city. That's what main plaza is, that's the city center. Why was this even a question? So it's there we go. And now we can see our that place. our ideology shifted slightly to the right. As you can see. And eventually we will get all the way to the end and get the full bonus. So now we will work on our reinforcements and our army. I could even go to war myself actively. However, right now I have no excuse to do it. So I would have to declare a surprise war, which would make me a traitor. And I probably don't want to be a traitor. So we will prepare a little bit. We will build up our military and then we'll see what to do with it. Here we have another neutral city. So one thing we can do later on is actually assimilate one of the neutral cities. That's probably what we'll do. I might even pay for the influence here to actually start gaining relations with them a little bit faster. But first, let's spend that influence to get the outpost, to get our silk. So this way, we have 5 silk inside our territory. So that's going to be plus 10 on each maker's quarter right now, once we hook it up. And later in the game, we will get plus 25% industry in every single city we own. It's going to be a very powerful bonus. Alright, now. Uh, 160 for the next one, so we'll wait for that. 110 for this one. I don't want to grab that strategic resource. Because, well, like I said earlier, it will almost certainly be useful. And then we have some more to the south. So this right here is going to be either oil or uranium because that's the only two strategic resources that can appear on the coastal tiles. Uranium can be coastal too, not just oil. So it's one or the other, it cannot be anything else. 
which probably means we want to grab it. Oil is an extremely important resource, and it can actually be quite rare. So here's another Civic we could pick up. I don't think I'm going to do that right now though. So this would reduce the assimilation cost for the new shards. So this is useful later on, but it's not useful right now because I can't assimilate them anyway. However, if I were to go to war right now, I could actually pick this up to get plus one combat strength on all my units. So again, that's what I was talking about earlier. I don't necessarily care about this bonus at the moment, but I might care about the ideology shift. We are not going to war right now at this moment, but if he declared war on me, I could get a plus one combat strength to all my units right there by picking that up. So that's definitely something to keep in mind. There are some tough decisions on the civics tree sometimes. There are a few in particular which move you towards the axis you might necessarily favor, but have a pretty powerful bonus. Okay, so we got two more turns to finish the garrison here. I think we can do it in one turn. Yes, we can. There we go. So that will finish the garrison, and now I can show you how you can get units there. Just need to finish it. People see it. There we go. Of safety and a symbol of power. And that gives us Only an era star, the builder star for district. So all you have to do is click this icon right here. That's the land unit spawn. And you can also do it in your capital. We have a narrative event here. So here's progress again. And we will also get plus five science in Babylon for 10 turns. We can get more faith in Babylon and we can get more stability. I prefer plus five science for 10 turns and we will move towards progress. So that's what we'll do. Now, before we keep working on our military, we should definitely get the obelisk. And one important thing about obelisks and wonders in general is that they do actually exploit the terrain you build them on. It's a minor thing, but the game does not actually tell you. So if you try to place it like it is, you might get the impression that this will not give you any yields. But again, it actually will. The game just doesn't tell you that. So I could build it somewhere like way out of the way. I could build it here and I will get that food and industry. So this is actually not a terrible spot. I could do it here. Do we have a tile with more than two food? And no, we do not. So it's really not that important, but it's just something that you should keep in mind. And let's just build it here. This is fine. Okay, we'll build it here. Now, I can build it in more than one city. Uh, however, I do not have more than one city at the moment. So that is not useful for me. Uh, anyway, we should still claim this territory here to be able to hook up uh, this outpost. Now, I could turn this into a city for 160 influence. And I will probably get my second city sometime soon, but not just yet. Here we got a unit. We actually got a warrior for free from a curiosity. So that is going to be useful. We'll be able to use him for some defense. For now, we can keep him on our garrison and he can guard this choke point over here. And that's that. So here's civic osmosis. So this is something that happens when your neighbor has some influence over your territory. When you're moving into his sphere of influence, basically. And then you have an option to either replace a civic you have, or revoke a civic you have, or take a 50 stability penalty for 10 turns. So minus 50 stability is quite rough, but I don't want to keep my influence here. And Babylon should have enough stability, and we are building the obelisk, which will give me plus 20. Not to mention, I can also build the public fountain. So I'm going to refuse, because I want my influence, not the science, not the faith here. But yeah, now I will actually get a stability penalty, and generally speaking, stability doesn't change instantly. It will change every single turn until it reaches its current target. So right now we are at 73, and we will lose 5% every turn until we reach 33. 
and we might be able to raise it by the time we get to 33. So just because it's dropping towards 33 right now, does not mean it will ever get there. However, if it falls below 30, you will get locked out of building most districts. You will only be able to build districts that give you stability, so I would only be able to place a garrison if it drops below 50. And if it drops too low and stays there, you will get the rebels, which is basically a neutral stack of units spawning near your city. They are not hard to beat, but just something to be aware of. Yeah, so here we have an option to get plus 14 industry, but minus 10 stability, and this would move us towards progress. This is normally what I pick up. This might not be the best option right now, because I already have a stability penalty. However, that industry bonus will help us build the obelisk faster, and then the public fountain faster. So I will still pick this up, even though it's technically a bit risky, but we should be okay. We could actually build the public fountain first, because that will be faster, and then the obelisk. So that's what I'm going to do. Although, well, the obelisk will give us plus 20, and it will also give us faith. We'll build the obelisk first. And this is specifically because it will give us more faith, which means we will gain more followers faster. Now, these guys are still aggressive, and they might try to actually ransack my outpost, which I definitely do not want to happen. Oh no, hold on, we are actually tolerant now. So they will not attack us. This should be fine now. We want to get to 100, but that will still take a while, unfortunately. Now, I'm not disbanding my scout yet, because I want to grab more land. I also don't want to piss people off too much, but we can definitely grab more land. And we're under attack. Yep, I'm not going to fight here, we will run away. That was a neutral stack. We want to grab this territory right here. So this guy is on his way to do that. Uh, the terrain is, again, a little bit rough. It's possible my other scout will be able to get there faster. In fact, I could do it with a warrior, but I would prefer to keep the warrior here, in case we get any war declared on us. Because my neighbor can declare war on me anytime, he has more than enough war support, and he will keep that war support. Uh, now my movement got restricted, because I'm in zone of control of this stack over here. So I got slowed down, unfortunately. And now I have to fight, because you cannot reach it more than once per turn. Unfortunately, that means I'm going to lose my guy here. Because even if I fortify, he's still going to die, unfortunately. And the battle will still continue on the next turn, but he's pretty much as good as dead. Which is not a huge deal, because he's a scout in the end but it does mean I lost one population, effectively, and, well, I lost a unit that could have started some outposts down there. Let's send this fella instead. Now we can see we got 58% stability. It is still dropping, but in two turns we'll finish the obelisk, which will give us plus 20. So we will never drop below 30 here. They're standing army, so that gives us access to iron, if there is any. And also swordsmen. Where's Iron? Uh, there's one down here, so we probably want to claim that if possible. Might be a little bit more complicated, but we can still do that if we go there. Doesn't look like there's any other swords in the area that we could get. There's one over here, so we could get this one. Uh, we will get that one. But again, I'm going to need a unit over there. Seems fairly unlikely anyone else is going to settle this in the near future, however. And we already have quite a lot of neutrals in the area. Hopefully they are done spawning for now. We have four neutral cities in the area. So, yeah. Okay, next up, we could go for Hydrology to unlock the Aqueduct, which gives stability, and also Water Mill, which gives industry on river. So that's one option. But let's get the wheel, because that will give us roads, 
between our cities and outposts. So uh, there's the obelisk right here. Now we will be getting yields from that. And now our stability is going towards 43%. So now we can build a fountain. I don't even have to rush the fountain right now, but 43% is a bit low. If we get a more civic osmosis, it would drop towards zero. In fact, well, it wouldn't drop towards zero and we lose the penalty from civic osmosis, but this is still kind of low. I would rather get more than that. Yeah, here it's civic osmosis again. So, okay, this is different because this is actually going to be a freebie because I do not have the civic enacted. We don't have either customary laws or codified laws. So I can actually accept this for free. As you can see, you will not spend any influence. Now, I don't have a choice which one is going to be. It will have to be codified laws. But that is fine. That is perfectly fine. We will get codified laws. Done. Okay, so I don't think we can actually move through here. Uh, yes, we can. And there are horses here. No, see, I can't. The horses are actually inside our territory, which is pretty funny. I didn't have them revealed, but now it turns out we had horses. <laughs> That's pretty funny. Let's maybe hook them up first. We got some birds, and these are aggressive, so I might want to stay away from them with my scout. These guys are peaceful. Yeah, this is quite a few unusual stacks down there. Alright, so this outpost doesn't matter too much. I just want to grab it to be able to connect this one. So the yields don't really have to be good. But we don't want more than two production. Can we get more? We can get six. We can get five food, seven production. So that's what we'll get so that the outpost will be done faster. So here we can get a minus 30% on the religious district industry cost, and we'll move towards individualism for more money. Or we can unlock procession action, which allows us to spend money to increase stability in the city, and that would move us towards collectivism, which is more industry. Uh, right now, I actually don't want either, so we'll pass on that. Uh, let's grab this really quick. That's 8 science, 10 influence. And we can grab the outpost. So this is the spot I kind of want. We could also get this one. A 5 foot 6 production. So one less production, but we'll start it on this turn. Works for me. Okay. So now we just need to wait for that to finish. And in order to get our second city, we would need 160, which we already have. So I could start a city right here, right away, if I want to. I could start a city in the west. There are quite a few factors that go into that decision. So I'll have to think about that a little bit. However, I think we've done enough in this video already. So uh, that's going to be the end of this episode. Thanks for watching all the way to the end. I appreciate it. I hope you find it helpful. Leave a like if you did, and uh, I'll see you in the next video. Bye-bye.